Uh, let's look at the parts of the tabla today. We'll just have a quick introduction and uh, find out how the tabla is placed, what are the different parts, and uh, let's go from there. So how I'm sitting right now is I have folded my legs. So I've got one of the legs uh, in and then push the next leg up on it. So this is the sitting folded leg position. And then I've got the tabla right in front of me. So uh, let's look at the parts of the tabla. Uh, this is called as the baya or the left drum, which is also called as the dagga. And this one is the daya, which is the right drum, and it is called as the tabla. So this is the treble drum. So if you hear the sound of this, this is the treble drum, whereas this is the bass drum or the bass drum. So uh, let's look at the individual parts. So this is this tabla is made out of wood, different kinds of woods. Probably see some would be the most commonly used. The 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 top portion here is called as the siahi, which is literally ink, uh, which is made out of metal fillings, so that uh, it gives that metallic sound or the treble sound on the tabla. This siahi is what makes the tabla resonate. So it will not vibrate otherwise because if you don't have the siahi, this is how it will sound. So if the siahi comes out someday, this is how it's going to sound. Uh, the next circle out of, uh, after the siahi is called as the lau. So this is the next circle, lau. The circle after that is called as the kinar or the chanti. So this is the outermost circle on the face of the tabla. This is this forms the face of the tabla. Now this face of the tabla is woven with this string here, which is called as a gazra. So this is how it's woven into the tabla. And it's held on to by these strings, which are uh, called as wadi. Now the face of the tabla is made up using goat skin, skin of a goat, while the wadi is made out of buffalo skin. And then they've got a provision to tighten the strings or loosen the strings based on the note that you want. Uh, and those are called as uh, wooden blocks. So you can just call them wooden blocks for uh, moving them around. So you can hammer them down or hammer them up to uh, increase or decrease the note of the tabla. So this is the tabla. Now, uh, pretty much similar for the dagga, it's the siahi is right in between. Uh, the next part would be the medan though, instead of the love. So this is the love, you can say, and this is the medan. Medan is a kind of play area. So that's the literal translation of medan because this is where you do all the modulation where your wrist moves so and it's a bigger section so it's called as a medan this dagga is primarily made out of copper or uh, nickel or uh, some some form of metal there are some exceptions where it's also made in clay but that was probably in the old times nowadays primarily the copper daggas are more popular because they give a more deeper sound this one is not tuned. This one is probably uh, lower on the note. So uh, let's look at how uh, we place the tabla. Now you will see multiple variations in how people place the tabla. For example, people sometimes place the tabla straight up. So how do you keep the tabla? So if the face of the tabla is, uh, is looking straight up at the ceiling, uh, what happens is one, when you're performing, your audience is kind of sitting down. So they are not at the same uh, position. You are at an elevated position. So what uh, that means is when you're playing, though the people can hear the audio effect of your tabla, they, they will not have a visual impact. So they will not be able to see your fingers moving so clearly. So this, though you can see it because it's uh, at the same same elevation, when the audience are sitting down, it becomes very difficult for them. 
to view it. So that is one. Plus the angle of the tabla is not so convenient to start. If you practice it at this uh, with, with a straight tabla, I'm sure that you will be able to. But it, it right at the beginning, it becomes a bit more uh, different to play it because the angle is not right. When you're coming from the top, you would rather have an angle rather than have a straight tabla. So these are the two things where uh, uh, this particular uh, form of keeping the tabla would be a bit more uh, cumbersome. There are some people who place the tabla like this, way tilted. Now what this means is if you need to place some composition like you have to reach a lot, right? You're supposed to stretch plus move forward. So, so you'll have to do a lot of that. Now, as I said, people who have already practiced in this position, I think they would still be able to vouch for it that I can play it in this form as well. But generally, you will play, you know, find that these people are more of lucky players who primarily interact with this area, not the entire tabla. The other part is uh, we generally lose out on the gravity in this case because, see, the tabla, instead of the dholki or the dholak or other forms which are placed like this, they don't have the benefit of gravity and I'm not comparing the form of uh, uh, different percussion drums. They have got their own benefits, but tabla in, in, uh, in itself has got one benefit of gravity. So when you are placing your hand, there's an obvious gravity that uh, is at work and you will need less amount of force, less pressure to get the sound than other instruments. You'll have to maybe uh, add some more pressure on it. So in, while you play like this, you will not be able to use that gravity. Plus you will have to reach out, right? So even though it manages the visual impact, it becomes a bit more cumbersome to play. So the ideal way would be to keep the tabla a bit tilted so that you get the angle plus you are able to show the face of the tabla to the audience. So generally when you start placing your tabla, now the tabla is placed on these rings so that it does not wobble. So if it's if it's just kept without the rings, it's going to wobble uh, uh, wobble away. So it's kept on the ring. Now if I keep the tabla straight as well as the dagga straight, this is how it is. I'll keep them face up. I'll pick them from the sides, and I'll tilt them forward towards each other, a bit towards each other. If you notice, the smaller section of the dagga is in the front. Whereas the medan or the bigger section is behind where my wrist would lay on the tabla. Okay. So this is how the tabla is placed. Now you'll see that the visual impact, there's a small tilt, which shows your fingers to the audience. Uh, the other part is you will also be able to use the gravity. Plus there's a natural angle that you get for the tabla. That's another benefit. Uh, also, while when you keep it this way, you will be able to see that uh, one is it cannot move towards each other because they are kind of touching each other. The other part is it cannot move out because it's kind of tilted inside. So it's not so easy to move the tabla outside. So it does not wobble so much. Plus, when I uh, touch the tabla to my legs, they cannot move the other way around. So the so the only place where it can move is forward. So that is, in fact, by the tilt, it takes care that it, the tabla does not wobble so much. So this is how you can place the tabla when you're playing. Now, uh, let's look at how you place your hands on the tabla. You've got the, uh, you've got both the hands sitting on the tabla flat. You just need to ensure that they're not parallel to each other. So not going straight, they need to meet somewhere. Okay. And somewhere or right in the front. So not so much that they meet right on the tabla, somewhere where uh, it's out of the tabla. So this is the placement of the hand so that it gives you a natural angle. I'm not tilting my wrist anywhere. My wrist is straight. Same goes for the dagga. The wrist is straight. It will not be tilted somewhere my wrist will be on the siahi just behind the siahi and i'll have a flat hand and similarly i'll i'll have my hand placed like this so this is how you can place your hand so this is just the placing of the hand uh, on the tabla
we'll look at other ways the basic uh, forms of notations in the next video so this is just an introduction to how you can place your tabla how to sit in front of the tabla um, pr primarily when you sit in front of the tabla you'll you'll sit straight uh, there are some people who who slouch a lot and the problem with that is if you see uh, uh, try to take a, a small pillow and keep it below you and then try to play the tabla you'll find it that it's much more easier because you get that elevation and you don't have to put a lot of pressure like this because your hands go down and it becomes easier on your shoulders and your uh, your arms that way so the more you sit up straight the more comfortably you will be able to play and uh, sitting straight, the posture is uh, important right from the beginning because you'll get used to that posture rather than sitting slouched on the tabla. Plus, it also looks better when you are uh, when you sit up straight because you you look alert, you look as if to be a part of the performance rather than as if you're not interested. So, sitting up straight visually also will have a big impact uh, on the audience uh, when they look at you when you're playing. So which is why it is important that you sit up straight as well. Try not, not to have too many bends or too many uh, shoulders going up, something like that, because that is also visually impairing. So it it, it makes sense to have your shoulders at the same uh, same level. A bit of movement of the shoulder is fine, but not uh, not too much. So that's, that's the initial introduction to uh, the tabla. In the next one, we will look at... Uh, the different notations in tabla and maybe learn a couple of tals.